All right, here we are with the final problem of the Python and five problems video series. And in this one, we're going to compare the growth of an investment with simple interest to that with compound interest. And this video is kind of like just the icing on the cake. We're going to take a bunch of the concepts that we've seen in the previous videos and put them together into one problem to solve something that's related to the curriculum, but also useful for real life. So here we go. What, what would we like to do here? Well, the plan is to create uh, to do a bunch of calculations to show the total uh, of an investment after several years, um, comparing the simple interest option to the compound interest option. And we're going to use Python to do that through a loop. So how do we set this up? Let's look at our pseudocode. And there's a few things we have to keep in mind. And I'm going to start with not the first step in the code, but kind of some of the final steps in the code here, just so we can really get to the heart of what is it that we're calculating and how are we going to calculate it. So. We are going to use a loop because we are going to show the total with simple interest compare it to that uh, total with compound interest for several years. So we'll use a loop to do that. And we're going to repeat that loop for some desired number of years. Uh, now I've kind of faded that out right now, this uh, repeat for desired number of years, because I'm not exactly sure how I want to set that up. And the rest of our pseudocode here will kind of show us how to go about doing that. So. In that loop, I'm going to print some uh, some things. I'm going to print the loop number, okay? So the number of uh, of the cycle through the loop, and that would represent the year that we're talking about. So zero would represent year zero. Next time through the loop would be one. That would represent uh, year one, and so on. I'm going to print the total for our simple interest situation, and I'm going to print the total for our compound interest situation. As you can see, I've chosen simple total and compound total uh, for those variables. And then I'm going to update the totals. So I'm going to update the simple total, total. Now let's think about how we calculate that. Well, with simple interest, we're always adding on the same value. And that value comes from, uh, well, often a percent uh, percentage of our principal. So I'm going to take the current simple total value, and I'm going to add uh, whatever the principal times that rate is okay and I, I i call this rate decimal because if i'm multiplying the principal by that value i want it in decimal form and that will give me my new simple total and then of course we would do that loop again and to get the next year's total for simple interest we would take the current one and add that exact same amount this would be a constant amount right the principal multiplied by that rate as a decimal i'm also going to update the compound interest total i'm calling it compound total and I would update that by taking the current compound interest total and adding whatever I get when I multiply the rate by the current total, because that's how compound interest works, isn't it? We take the current total and find a percentage of that, which gets added to the, um, the value. So that's how we're gonna update our compound total. We're gonna take the current compound interest total um, and we're going to add whatever we get when we multiply that by the rate. Okay, so we won't be adding the same amount each time here because the compound total is going to change. Not like here where we're always taking a percent of the principal. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to end the loop. So let's uh, let's go back to the beginning of our program here. We'd have to define some variables. Uh, principal is obviously an important one. That is the, uh, the initial amount. Rate as a percent. Now notice here, I called it rate decimal. But I'm going to set this up so when the user enters the rate, they can put it in as a percent, 2.4% right? or something like that and the number of years and i'm calling this years input because it's going to represent the uh, the value that is input by the user now the next step might seem a little bit weird um, but i'm going to have to consider something here i want the user to be able to enter the number of years uh, as an integer or you know as a decimal i'm only going to treat it as an integer when it comes uh, when it comes down to making the calculations but i want them to have the freedom to input it however they want. Okay. Now you, of course you could just say enter an integer for the number of years and then you don't have to deal really with this step here, but I'm going to say if the user enters an integer for the number of years, then uh, just do something with it. But if they enter something else like a decimal, then do something else with it. So what am I going to do if they enter an integer? Well, I'm essentially just going to take that value, which would be a string in Python and convert it to an integer. So there's that int function. And that's going to be my years value, which I'm going to use for the calculations. But if they enter a decimal, say they enter 6.5 years, 
I'm just going to say, okay, we're just going to do seven years. Then I'm going to round it up and say, just do seven. If they enter, you know, 5.3 years, I'm going to say do six years. So if they enter something that's not an integer, I'm going to say, okay, take that value, make it an integer. Now, what that essentially does is it just gets rid of the decimal part. So if you input uh, 7.5 and you tell Python to convert that to an integer, it's going to give you seven. It just drops that decimal part off. But then I'm going to say add one. So if they enter, say, for example, 7.5, it's going to use eight years for the calculations. Okay, because it's going to take the integer part of 7.5. So that's seven. I'm going to add one to make it eight. So that's just a little adjustment to the the years input from the user. And from there, just a little bit more to go, we'll set some initial values. So the rate uh, as a decimal, I'll take that input uh, for the rate as a percent and divide it by 100. The simple total, well, the initial value for our simple interest total is going to be whatever the principal is. Same with compound interest total. The total that we have for our compound interest situation is going to start with whatever the principal value is. And that's when I'm going to go to the loop. Now, how many times do I want to run this loop? That's the last thing we need to decide here. Well, let's think about what would happen if the user input, for example, the number seven. So if they input seven, that's an integer. So the number, so years here is going to be seven, seven years. Now, does that mean I want to say something like do a for loop with a range of seven? Not really, because if I want to see the information for seven years, I need to get up to year seven. If I put input, uh, do a for loop with range seven, it's only going to go from zero to six. Remember that? So I just want to add one more to that value. So if they put in like nine years, for example, I want to do a loop for, for uh, nine plus one. So do it for 10, because then it'll do, uh, it'll do the loop using values from zero through nine. So I'll actually see year number nine. Otherwise, I'll always be one short of the desired number of years. So what I'm getting at, it's getting a little wordy here, is that I want to make the loop go um, years plus one times. I'm going to do a for loop, but I'm going to uh, add one to the number of years just so I make sure I see all the information I want to see. So let's get into our online Python compiler here and see what this looks like. I'm going to go fairly fast because we are at the fifth video. So buckle up. Here we go. Let's start. We said, uh, okay, first of all, I'm going to import the math library. And I'm not really going to tell you why I'm doing this right now, um, but it has to do with that whole conversion between the years that are input and what we actually use for the calculation for the years. So input math library. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Import math. So that's done. Now we need to read some values from the user, right? So looking back at our um, code here, we need to read the principal or the rate as a percent and the number of years, which I'm calling years input. So we'll say, uh, make a comment, maybe we'll say read values from user. And we'll just say the principal principle is going to be, and I'm going to want this as a float number. So I'm just going to type it in right now, floating point number, input, and the prompt will be enter the principal. And I will put the colon with a space. And then you know what, just for fun, let's put a dollar sign because it's going to be input in dollars. So there's the principal. Let's uh, do rate as a percent. And we'll say again here, we want a floating point number and an input. And we'll just say, uh, enter the, let's say enter the annual interest rate. And in brackets, maybe we'll say as a percent. So we'll say enter the an annual interest rate. And then in brackets, we'll say as a percent. Good enough. Okay, and then let's get our years. So years input is going to be, and again, I'm going to accept decimals. So I want to convert this to a float. We'll say input, and we'll just say uh, whatever. We'll just say how many years would you like to see essentially? So we we'll say, yeah, good enough. How many years? Okay. Oops. Now we're at that step. If we go back to our pseudo code here where we need to consider what was input for the number of years and then make an adjustment. So we're going to say if the years uh, is an integer, just keep it like that. If it's not, 
then make it an integer. So drop the decimal part and then add one to it. Now, the question that we really need to deal with here is how do you check if a number is an integer? And there's a cool, clever little trick for doing that. So let me first say convert years uh, to integer. And why are we uh, why are we really converting the years to an integer here? Well, maybe we're, you know we're setting up the program so it only shows that. But also because we're going to do a loop, um, we will. Uh, based on the number of years, we're going to need it as an integer because the for loop requires an integer in that uh, in that range parameter. Okay, so convert years to integer, I'll say for the loop. All right, so how are we going to do that? How do we check if an input's an integer? Well, essentially, we just uh, we check if there's a cool way to do it, we check if, if it's equal to what that number would be if you rounded it, right? So let's say we rounded it down is, is six an integer? Uh, yes, it is, because if I round that down, I get 6. It's the same thing. Is 7.8 an integer? No, nope, because if I round that down to the nearest uh, integer, it's 7. So 7 and 7.8 are different. So 7.8 is not an integer. Okay. And the function we used to do that is called the floor function. And that's why I'm, I had to input that math library. It was for the so-called floor function. And the floor function essentially does that. It rounds something down to the closest integer. Um, <laughs> the, the formal language for the floor function, I think, is that it finds the greatest integer less than the actual value. So essentially, yeah, it means it rounds it down. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if the floor of the year's input is the same as the year's input itself, that means we have an integer being entered, so we can just keep that value. So how do we do that? Well, we have to call the floor function from the math library and say if the floor of that years, what did I call it, year input, I think I should probably change that to years. I'm going to change it up here to years input. So if the rounded down years input value uh, equals the... Um, I have to use a double equals, equals the actual year's input value itself. We could uh, we could do something. Okay, now another way to do this would be able to would be to check if the type of that input is an integer. There's a way to do that too, but I kind of wanted to show you this floor function here. So we're gonna we're gonna run with this. So we'll say that new variable years is just going to be the integer. Uh, we're gonna convert it to an integer of years input, which it would already be anyway really right okay so that's one way to do that and then we'll say otherwise so else what we would do is we would take that year's input and we would convert it to an integer oops that was a mistake we would convert the year's input to an integer years input which is going to drop the decimal part and then we're going to add one so that's one way you could do it. Now there are many other ways you could you could set this up here, but that's one way where we can say um, if an in integer is input, let's just keep that, and that'll be our years variable. If uh, a decimal is input, we're essentially going to take the next highest uh, value. We could also use something different here called the ceiling function, where we could say years is the ceiling of that value that was input. Um, there's so many ways you could do this. It's just just one that uh, that came to mind right now. So let's, uh, let's move on then. Where are we in our pseudo code here? We've adjusted the years input for our calculations. Oh, we have to set some initial values. Okay, so let's go and look at doing that. So we'll say uh, maybe a comment here, set initial values. And it gets pretty confusing if you do all this, this stuff here. Anyway, the rate as a decimal is going to be our rate percent we called it divided by 100 so that's easy our simple interest total so the value of the uh, like the amount in the account I guess you could say initially will be whatever the principal is some principal and our compound total so that is our total using the compound interest plan is going to be initially the principal all right so there we go and now, last but not least here, we're going to calculate uh, and print the yearly totals. 
Okay, so how do we do that? We'll use a for loop. We said we were going to do that. And we'll say, we'll use, um, we'll just use x as our variable here, our dummy variable for x in. And we need a range. And remember what that range was. We wanted to take whatever years is, but we wanted to add one because if we wanted to see it for 20 years, if we just put 20 here, we'd only see 0 through 19. So we're going to add one so we see 0 through 20. It's a loop, so make sure you have that colon. And let's print. Let's print our first uh, our first one. So I'm going to start by printing x, which is the cycle we're on through the loop. It'll start at 0, which kind of means like year 0, and then it'll go to 1 and 2 and so on. So that's the year. And maybe I'll actually put some text to indicate that. That's the number of years. And... Then I'll put, uh, so maybe we'll do this this thing with the three dashes here just to create a little bit of space. And then I'll put the simple interest total. But I want a dollar sign in front of it, so maybe I'll just throw that in back here. Save myself a little bit of typing. And yeah, so I'm going to do that. Now I want to round it. It's money. Let's round it to two decimal places. So we'll say round the simple total to two decimal places. I think so far so good, I hope. Um, it's fine. Don't need that space there. And now we want to maybe do just another spacer with, uh, with the dollar sign here for the compound interest total. So we'll say, again, we'll round the compound total to two decimal places. So that should give us the, the the printed values and starting at uh, year zero and then we gotta we have to update the totals for the the following year so how do we do that well let's start with our simple total so we'll say simple total how do we update that well we take its current value which is simple total and we increase it by whatever the principal multiplied by the rate is don't forget we want the rate as a decimal though we called it that earlier and then we'll update the compound interest plans total so compound total equals now if you don't know where this is going where do you see the results and you can look back at the code and hopefully make some sense of it so compound total plus uh how do we find compound interest we take the current compound interest total and we multiply it by the rate as a decimal and then we add that to that current total so that should be the correct math and there it is. So again, I was not really looking much at my screen while I was typing this. So hopefully I haven't made any silly errors, but let's, uh, let's run it and see what happens. Okay. That's a good start. Enter the principal. So let's say a thousand dollars, enter the annual interest rate as a percent. So let's just make something up here, say 2.5%. How many years? Let's say 10 years. So I'm expecting to see calculations from zero through 10 years. Cause I added one to um, to uh, to the input value. Remember all that whole adjustment we made back here. So why did I get rid of my 10 there? Sneaky. All right, now nah, it's not going to work. Something happened there. I think it may be because we're using an online compiler. I'll run it again. So $1,000, 2.5 for the interest rate. Now let's do 10 years. There it is. And does that seem right? Well, we should see our simple interest increasing, that, that total increasing linearly, which it is compound interest should be higher it's the same for the first year yeah this looks this looks right okay now let's try something else let's say um we'll do the same thing we'll say a thousand dollars uh we'll say the interest rate is oh it doesn't really matter let's just say <laughs> let's say three percent okay how many years let me go with uh let me do 7.5 so this should show me all the way up to eight years if we've set it up correctly there it is, zero years all the way through eight. There's our simple total. There's our compound interest plans total, the amount in the account that is the total for zero years through eight years. So it worked. So a lot going on there. Of course, you can you can change things around. This whole bit here, I just wanted to show you um, kind of how to use that floor function and remind you of you know the need for the doubles equals sign here and all that stuff. You could do this different differently, or you could completely get rid of it and just only accept integer values for um for the uh, the number of years it's totally up to you have some fun with it i hope you enjoy that i'm going to do one more video in this series just talking about some other uh, uh important things that you might find useful so there you go take care